What is going on everyone? In today's project we're going to create a random name picker. Basically we're going to have a list of names and when we click on this little button then it's going to give us one random name or multiple random names. Because as you may or may not know I am releasing my React 30 projects course. I think next week we, it should be out. And I asked many of you on a post here on YouTube to leave your username in order to enter a competition we are going to pick three of you they're going to receive the course for free. So free for free. Excellent name of choice there. But for this, I needed something that will randomly pick me free names. So this is why I thought to myself, let's create a little project, a little application that's going to pick for us free name. We got here a array of five usernames. I can add more or less. But now if I click on this get random user, following thing will happen. It's going to loop over them and randomly pick one of them. Also going to see up here, let's just click on it, a little animation. We're also going to create this animation. It's going to take three seconds and then one of them will be picked. Now the three seconds is set by me. You can set more or less. And also let's, let's hope we're going to get an error. Let's pick another one. And there's user number three. And let's pick another one. Please give me an error. Please give me an error. Ah, number five. Uh, let's try again. <laughs> hope I'm not running out of names. With, uh, oh. There we go, there's an error, there's a little circle. This means it's going to re-loop over the function until it's going to get, well, if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to show you why this error appears and it's a sort of bug of use state, of, of the use state hook. Okay, so React project, hope you're excited. Let's get started with the project. All right, so let's open up our terminal and I'm going to npx, ooh, not npc, <laughs> create dash react dash app and dot space dot basically i'm going to create it in my code this is just a folder that i created on the desktop so let's hit enter and until react is uh, installing here everything let's just talk about the project a bit so we're going to create here an application that is going to have a database which we're going to create here in a folder a db uh, we're also going to create a couple of components a progress bar component that you just saw here this is a component then we're going to create the spinner component that you saw in case that we have an error. We have our user list. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Yeah, that's kind of it. Not much to it. Also the code, the entire code will be down in the description below on my blog as always. And also I'm not going to create the CSS part of this. You can just go to the code, to the um, source code and download it. I'm just going to paste the CSS in here and we're good to go because we're F focusing on how to create this little fellow right here. Come on, give me another error. No, you don't want. Come on, come on. Nope, no error. This was so frustrating when I first uh, recognized this problem. It's, oh, there we go. There's an error. Okay. So everything is installed. Let's, uh, let's do, let's start the application. This is running on a different server. So uh, npm, npm start. Okay, this asks me on a different port. Of course, I want it on a different port. So it's going to start on 3001. And we should get our React app. Come on. Hey, why is this taking so long? Nevertheless, let me start deleting here a couple of things. So app test, index CSS. Uh, actually, index CSS, I can leave it in there. A logo, SVG. No, I also need that. You know what? I'm not going to delete anything. I'm just going to leave it as it is. And let's quickly start with our application. I'm going to move this little fellow to the left side. We have our finished project here so I can reference it. Perfect. Okay, so let's go into our source folder. Within here, let's create a new folder. Let's call it components, components, nuts. And I'm going to create here three components. One will be the progress bar dot JSX, RFC. Then let's create another component, which will be the spinner, spinner, dot jsx oh by the way we're also going to use style components I'm not going to do anything right now for for this part and let's create our little use user database i'm just going to create a file called user or name list or whatever you want to call it, user list dot js also this application will be used then to determine the free winners we don't need your test and i'm going to copy in so open up the css and just copy over everything in, that you will find in uh, in my CSS file, which you can download it in the description below. Source code, there we go. Okay, so we just changed a couple of things here. As you can see, background color changed. This is much smaller and so forth and so on. Okay, let's go back to 
I can close up app CSS, uh, the user list. So let's let's create here and also export a const. I'm going to call it users name, usernames, usernames. Much better. Assign it to an array of strings. Be name dash one. Then the next one will be name. Oops, within a string, name dash two, and so forth and so on. Let's just hit save and start copy and paste them in. Let's blah, 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 blah. copy a couple of them. Number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, seven, eight, nine, and <laughs> okay, that's it. Uh, this is done. That's all that we need. We can close this up. So we have got our users. Let's go into our app JS, and within here, let's import. Uh, usernames, user names, and we got the imp we got the import them from slash components and slash user list. Let's also bring in use state import use state as a React hook. So we're going to import it from React, and we're going to have here before I return a couple of states. First of all, we need our users to be set to a state. So let's use const and users and set users you users and we're going to assign this to use state and we're going to pass in here our user names now okay there's our usernames and we also need the list for the winners so const winners and set winners and use state and this will be set to a empty array also going to create a state for our ui because each time I make some kind of changes also as you can see here this action right here is changing the ui also, when we're getting that error is again changing the UI. So I want to be able to manipulate it using state. So we're going to create a const, we're going to call it UI props, and then set UI props. Assign it to use state. Hey, use state. And I'm going to pass here into a object a button disabled. I'm going to set this to the Boolean of false. And then a display progress bar. And we could also set this to false. Okay, now let's go down to our return. You know, I'm going to leave this app, but uh, in the header, I'm going to create a unordered list. So create a unordered list. Oh, wait a second. Script, JavaScript, let's change this to React. Okay, so UL, unordered list. Also give this the ID of user list. And within here, we're going to grab onto our users. So within curly brackets, loop over them using a map method. And I'm going to grab on to the user, to each user and their index, because I'm going to use the index then to assign a key to each item. So we're going to return here in a li with a class name of list dash item. These are all just my CSS classes. Uh, let me also go back to our application. Okay, so it's started to change. And we're also going to give this the key because each element in a map requires a key and the key will be the just the index. Okay, and now within here, we're going to pass in each of our users. So we should see, why aren't I seeing our user? Learn React, uh, pam, 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 pam. Uh, expected to return value from error function. Wait, what? Oh, sorry about that. I wrapped this into curly brackets and don't need you. And there we go, there are our names, our usernames. Okay, so we just returned from our database using our use state, our users. Now underneath of our list, I'm going to create another div with the class of react-container. And I'm going to move up in here, everything that is uh, down here. So image, anchor, paragraph tag, so forth and so on. Okay, so there are now in one line and on the last line, basically we're going to have three columns exactly as you see here. On our last column will be then the winners list. So let's go down here, right before a header after the div of React Container, I'm going to create here a unordered list with the class of winners. And within here, we're going to pass in our winners from our state. We're going to use our map again and we're going to pass in here a winner and its index. And let's just return a I'm going to go down here. Li, again, I'm going to wrap it in here. So we're going to return a list item. Each list item is going to have a key with the index, the class name of list item, just as we had it up there. 
uh, list item. Let's hit save and we're going to return here a winner. Okay, so basically our winners are empty because we're not returning anything. If I would pass in here one string of winner dash one, then it's going to appear here with a little animation. Okay, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave this string empty because we're going to select from our users the winners and then they're going to be passed into this winners by using our set winners. Uh, but before that, let's let's take care of this part right here. First thing first, I'm going to wrap our image actually up here. Let's just start up with a couple of conditions. So if from the UI props dot display progress bar is true, then we're going to display here a component of progress bar progress and bar. Let's close it up. I know that the component is not brought in yet, but we're going to bring it in. Uh, let's see here. Let's type in comment components and we're going to bring in import the progress bar from our components and I'm not displaying anything because obviously this is set to false. So if as long as this is false, it's not going to display anything. As soon as it's true, it's going to display our progress bar. Uh, next, we're going to display our image down here, our logo. And this will also have a condition. This will be set in a error boundary, but I'm not going to take care of this right now. We're going to come back to this when we're going to get the error. And down here, I'm just going to leave this as it is. Uh, let's just replace this with 30. And after that, I'm just going to create a button. And the button will obviously trigger our our randomize. So let's get random random name here. Okay. Addition now on click handle my get random name or username or whatever. Okay, so let's hit save. We should get up. Uh, yeah, it's not created. I'm going to create it up here. Let's type in here a comment of handlers and const get random name, assign it to an error function. I'm going to set here. I'm just going to leave it open for now and also delete this paragraph tag. I actually don't need it. Okay, now I'm going to change our 30 here into an H1. Let's pass it in here and also delete the anchor tag. We do not need it. Perfect. So the get random name should get us a random name. For now, let's just console log here something so we know that this is working. Let's console log the string of get. Uh, now let's just console log the string of name. Okay, let's inspect. Right click inspect on the page. Let's go to the console. Why am I getting those errors? And now let's click here and we're going to get name. Okay, all of this is already styled. So don't have to take care of this. We know that our click word works. So next up, let's let's get a random name. Now our handle get random name will launch a function. Let's go down here. Utility functions. And this should be states. Always comment everything on. States. And um, by the way, if you don't know React, I have an excellent crash course on YouTube, so check it out. Okay, our utility functions. Well, when we're going to when I'm going to handle the get random name action going to call a function, then it's going to generate a random name. And I want to generate it outside of this click. So let's create a function I'm going to call this get random, come on, random and name. And this will basically just return a random user or random name, whatever you want to call it, random, let's call it random name. Okay, now I'm going to create this in a variable up here, assign it let random name, and I'm just going to initiate it up here. But down here, I'm going to assign it now to the users. Remember, this, the state now is a array. I'm going to pass in this array now the math dot floor, and we're going to math dot random the usernames dot length. Okay, so that's all this function does is going to get me a random name from our user database, usernames. Okay, now this function get random name will be now called in here. As soon as I click on this button and should also, now I'm going to pass it into the console log so you can see what happens. Instead of name, I'm going to pass it in here. So let's click on this and going to get name one. Let's click on this again, I'm going to get name, name two, name eight, name one. So it is getting me a random name. Perfect. Now we need to display this random name here in our users. But before I do that, 
I want to generate here an animation that is going to load, uh, simulate a loading or roulette or something like that. It's going to generate that name. Now I'm going to only do the effect because you can see it's almost instantly happening. Uh, on click is just happening. But I want to have here kind of a small effect. So this is why I created this UI props because when we are going to trigger this, I'm going to set our UI props to button disabled, set to true. Now let's go down to our button and let's set, where's the button? Hey, button, there we go. And after on click event, I'm going to use the button, you know, it has a disabled, disabled property. I'm going to set this to the state of UI props dot button disabled. So whatever the state of this button is up here is now going to be passed down to the button. So if I click on the button, it's going to disable my button. So let's take a look, click on the button, button is disabled, I can no longer click it. It generated one name, let me do a refresh. So it just, let's clear up the console, it's going to generate a name and then disable the button. So generate a name, disable the button, I cannot click it anymore. Basically I want to disable the button as long as the animation is running. So in order for the animation to run, we now need to get to the next property, which is display progress bar, we going to also set to true. So let's take care of, a, of our progress bar. Let's go to our progress bar. This is a extremely simple thing. I'm just going to get add to this a ID of progress. And then within here, I'm going to create, instead of the progress bar, I'm going to create a, another div uh, with the class of color. Color. And there we go. Okay, so let's do a reload here. Did I actually bring in the progress bar? Let me just take a look. In our app, progress bar should be displayed here. So if this is true, then it should display me the progress bar. There we go. It's animating. Now this is happening back in our CSS, so we don't have to take care of this. Okay, so this has finished. The button is still disabled and this is still showing. This means we need to hide them now. In order to do that, you can close up your progress bar. No longer need it. In order to do that, we need to go back to our, our handler and not console log the name, but set it. So we're not going to call this in a console log. We are going to call it in a set timeout function. So set timeout. And I said this is going to take roughly three seconds. You can increase it if you wish. So 3000 milliseconds. And within here, I'm going to uh, now copy this, paste it in here, comment it, actually not comment it, but actually delete it. I'm going to comment it back out. I'm going to delete the console. I'm going to call it in here. And after this is done, after we call the function, we're going to get a random element. We're going to reset our set UI. We're going to copy it, paste it in here, and set them both to false. U and U. Okay, so let's see what happens. Let me do a refresh. It's going to take three seconds, and then progress bar will disappear and get random name. The button itself will... Um, well, will be enabled again. I'm also going to close up the console. Okay, so next up is time to assign the winner to the winner list. This means that after we got a random, uh, get random name, this means that this element right here, actually I'm going to move it up. I'm going to move it before the handlers because we need this, although it's globally scoped now. Now this random name, let's go back into our handler, right after get random name, and let's create here a const of update user list or name list. Uh, let's go update name s names list name list. Let's call it, let's leave it name list. Okay, we're going to take our users. We're going to now filter over them. We we'll use the filter method, and we're going to return here user, and this user should not be equal to the random name that we just generated. Now we can take this list, this newly created, woo, this newly created list, and set our users to the updated list. Now, why are we doing this? Because I want to remove this user that I'm generating from this list. So let's just try this. But what just happened? Well, the user was not removed because it's not assigned anywhere. So let's let's type in here a couple of comments. Let's add random name to winner list basically going to set winners now 
we get this structure here of winners using the spread operator and then set our random name within here. Then we're going to remove, we're actually going to update and remove the random name from our users. Did I call them users? Yeah, users. Okay, so let's try this again. And there we go. Name one is here, but it's still in here. Oh, this is because I made a little boo-boo here. This should be just users in our users list and not usernames. There we go. Okay, so the name that was generated was removed. Let's let's do a refresh here. Get another one. Let's generate random name. And number four, as you can see, number four was removed. Okay, so we just got one, removed it in order for for the name no longer to take part of this list. And this means that we cannot loop over it again and get the same name a second time. Now let's generate another one. And we got name number one, and another one, and we got a line. This is because when we're removing from here elements from the state, somehow a unidentified element will take its place. So let me actually show you this. Let me show you what happens. Let's open up the console. Let's go to a console. Let's clear this. And within our handler, let me console log right after I created this get random name, console log the random name that we just generated. Okay, so let's click on get random name again. And there we go, another unidentified. So what we just passed in here is a unidentified. Let's do this again. And now I'm getting name number three. Now this could happen multiple times. So the way we can handle this error is by going into our handle get random name in our set timeout after we we got a random username and let's create here a condition so if the type of random user random name i'm still saying user sorry about that is unidentified then we're going to type in here comment handle error else well else i'm going to just execute this part right here so i'm going to move this up into our else statement. Now let me create another state. We go down here, const, and I'm going to call this error and then set error. Let's add this to use state. And within here, I'm going to do two things. First of all, I want to be able to set the progress to to set the process time. So the process time was three seconds. Process, process time. I'm going to set this to 3000. And then we're going to set here a loading to false, the Boolean. Okay, now I'm going to replace this process time with these 3000. So error dot process time going to be passed in here. This means when I have an error, it's not going to take three seconds to be processed, but it's going to take much less. That much less is depending on what I set it to. So let's go up here and handle error. I'm going to set error here. If this is true, then we're going to change here how this is handled. Basically, I'm going to change the process time to only one second. You can also change it to 0.5 seconds or something like that if you want to do it, if, if you want to process this even quicker. And then I'm going to also set loading to true. So what is this loading? Well, this loading is actually our spinner. So remember down here where we had our image, this React icon that we we're trying to spin there. Well, I'm going to create now a condition that if error error dot loading is true, then I'm going to display here a spinner component. Else, I'm going to display the image component. Now we need to bring in our spinner. We had it up here, and for this you need to install React style components. So let's open up a new console and just npm i type in here styled dash components okay and after this is installed we can then check it in our package.json so let's go in here and we should see there we go style components was now installed so let's close it up go to our spinner and now we need to import first of all going to create a react functional component is going to return the spinner so let's also bring it into our app uh, progress bar and I'm going to replace this with spinner. Okay, so actually just the text of spinner should appear. Let's just try this. As soon as we have an error, it should, or we have an unidentified, the spinner should appear. Come on. Okay, there we go. So spinner just appeared. 
but it's not moving on because we need to go back to our app. After we, res we reset this, there you have it, to take only one second, this, this means we need to rerun our handle get random name. This will actually rerun the function. So I'm going to execute it here once more. And now if I click on get random item or get random name, uh, this is still disabled. Now run, and when I'm going to get that error, come on, get me that error. Okay, and now it's gone. Okay, so it started doing loops of one second until it got it right. Basically, that's that's it. That's how I handled this error. Now let's display the spinner. So let's go back to our spinner. And I said we need to import here. So let's import styled and also keyframes from styled components. So before I export, first of all, we need to create our spinner animation. So let's create here const spin, and we're going to assign this to keyframes. Now use backticks. And if you don't have the extension installed that you should go to your extension and search for uh, style, styled components. There we go. You should install this extension. This is going to give you the snippets for writing regular CSS. Okay, so let's go in here between backticks and we're going to send this from 0% to 100% and that 0% is going to go, it's going to have a transform of rotate and zero turns, zero turn. And then at 100%, it's going to have one turn and 100. Okay, so this is the animation. I can close up this. And now let's create our style component, which we're going to just export const spinner style. We're going to call this component. We're going to style this to assign this to styled dot image so we're creating an image element here a image tag we're going to give this a margin of two ram and zero and then we're going to use our animation so just as you would do in css animation the animation name we need to now pass it in as a variable because we have it up there as a cons created so spin is going to take one second and it's going to go infinite okay and now instead of having this div i'm going to wrap it into my spinner style Meaning that I, instead of having a spinner, I'm going to have an image. Now the image has now a source prop, and I'm going to pass in here the link for where I'm extracting that SVG. And there we go, there's a spinner. Excellent. Now let's make the spinner disappear. We know we have an error, but after we're solving that error, the spinner should disappear and the button should be, actually the, as long as this spinner is live, the button should be disabled and only then it's going to be enabled again. So let's go back to our app. You can also close up your spinner, have only the app opened. Let's make here a bit more real estate. And now let's go into our handler. So we have our else statement. It's going to execute everything that's in here. It's going to reset here our UI props, but you also need to set error now after we're done. So after there is no more error, we're going to reset our error to progress time and 300. And we're going to set loading now to, well, false. Okay, so let's do a complete refresh. I'm going to also close this up. So let's see what happens. I'm going to get random name. And there's a first name. Let's get the second one. Let's get a third one. And let's see, do we get an error? No, I'm going to keep doing this until I'm going to get an error. And there's the error. Now it's looping over one, two. Okay, now it's, now it's got the right user. And this is done. Okay, so hope you enjoyed the project. Hope you learned a lot. Again, the day that I'm going to release the course, this is the project that we're going to use, not the project, this is the application that we're going to use to get the free winners. And those free winners are going to get free, free coupon codes. Hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, give me a like, share this with others, leave a comment if you have any kind of questions or suggestions for future projects. And if you're not subscribed, this is a great time to subscribe because we release new content like this on a regular basis. Okay, everyone, have a lovely day. My name is Norbert, and catch you on the flip side. Bye-bye.